Every day I'm shuffling And then uh, one fine day he decides that uh, his wall in the office is not exciting enough. He just did it. <laughs> Alright, so today I'll be talking about information extraction with network centrality. Finding rumor sources and measuring incidents. Okay. So the main focus of this talk will be large scale networks. So in the world today, networks are getting incredibly large and incredibly complex, especially social networks. So for example, this is a portion of Twitter. So Twitter is a network where there's over 200 million users and they're posting these messages called tweets at the rate of about 750 per second. So it's an incredible massive data. Another well-known social network is Facebook. Here's a portion of someone's Facebook network. But Facebook has over 750 million users. And they're incredibly large networks. And now in these networks, Buried in there is actually useful information that you want to get to. And the question is, how do you actually mine this complex data to extract the useful information from the network? Now, to do this, you'll need algorithms. But the algorithms you use have to have two properties. First, they have to be high performance, in the sense that they have to actually be able to find the information you want in the network. And the second important property they need to have is they have to be scalable, as in a linear time at worst, because the data is so huge. Anything beyond linear time is not going to work for any kind of real network we're talking about. Now, there's a natural tension between scalability and performance. So, for example, if you want to have a really high performance algorithm, you may end up doing a little bit more work to make it achieve the high performance, so you're going to pay in the scalability, and vice versa. But it turns out, for a certain class of network problems, you'd actually achieve both high performance and scalability if you use something called network centrality. So, what is this network centrality? So what it is, is it's a function that assigns scores to nodes in a network. And there's many kinds of network centralities. So for example, a very simple one is called degree centrality, which is the degree, the number of neighbors a node has. So in this network here, let's redraw it. Let's make the size of the nodes proportional to their degree centrality. It looked like this. So the guy here with a lot of neighbors has, is pretty big. And these guys with one neighbor, they're pretty small. So we get one kind of structural information of degree centrality. Now another kind of centrality is called distance centrality. Now this is how you measures roughly the average distance from a node to the rest of the network, or more precisely, the inverse of that. So if I'm close to the whole network, I have a big distance centrality. Now it's the same thing. Let's take this network, redraw it with distance centrality sizes. It looks like this. So still the same guy is pretty big for the distance and for degree, right? Mm -hmm. But if you look at these guys here on the edge, they're actually a lot bigger than they are here. So while the same nodes are identified as important by both centrality measures, the way they quantify the importance is actually different depending upon the kind of structure you consider. Is it degree, is it distance, or maybe it's just something else. So these network centralities actually give you this nice structural representation of your network in a very compact manner, right? It's just a set of numbers for the nodes. And what you can do with this information is that if you give me some kind of big network data and have some kind of problem you want to solve on the network, what I'll do with this network centrality philosophy is I'll first figure out what is the right centrality to use for the problem at hand, right? What is the right structure I want to extract from the network? Once I figure that part out, the second part is, how do I actually use that centrality measure to construct a solution to my problem? Now this philosophy has been used before on a very well-known problem with great success. And the problem is web search. So here's the problem. I go to the internet, I type a query for the word, let's say networks. I'll get a bunch of pages that match my results. Now the whole challenge is, how do I rank the results for the user in order of relevance? Now one way to do this is to basically look page by page of the content and figure out you know, which one is more relevant for me. But another way to do this that's maybe more efficient is to observe that the pages, they don't exist in isolation. They exist in a network because web pages link to each other. And maybe this structure, this network, give us some information to actually help us rank web pages. So this is what Google did initially. So Google figured out that if they use this network structure and you calculate a centrality measure that they developed called PageRank. You can calculate page rank on this network of the internet, and they can just rank the pages by the page rank score. Now, page rank is good because it's high performance. If you ever use Google, you know it works pretty well. And also, it's scalable. They can calculate page rank for the entire internet. So here we see a network centrality give us a scalable, high performance solution. So now let's try to follow this approach to some other network problems. The first problem I want to talk about is motivated by cyber attacks. 
And a very famous example of a cyber attack is the Stocks Network. So if you haven't heard about this worm, it's a pretty neat story. So in the spring of 2010, the Stocks Network worm starts in the internet somewhere and it starts spreading around. And then it had a very unique kind of uh, attack. So it didn't attack every machine it's on. It only attacked certain machines running a certain kind of hardware. And it turns out this hardware is actually used to control centrifuges. What it would do is it would make the centrifuge spin out of control and break the centrifuge. So while it hasn't been confirmed, many reports say that the Stuxin worm actually set Iran's nuclear program back by a few months to a few years, depending on who you talk to. And while we don't know who started it, most people are kind of sure that the Israeli government, with maybe some help the United States government, started the war. But these aren't confirmed. <laughs> But well, the important point is that this is the new kind of you know, cyber warfare. And there's two questions you want to ask. So if I'm the party wanting to perpetrate an attack, I want to spread this worm so I can't be detected. And if I'm the other side being attacked, what I want to do is I want to find that source. I want to find who was the one that started the attack and came after me. Now, cyber attack is one specific instance of a more general problem. I like to coin with the word rumors. So finding a rumor source. Your rumor could be a cyber attack. It could be maybe a viral epidemic in a human population. Think, for example, swine flu. Or it could be some trend like the new chocolate bar is popular in a social network. Whatever it is, the question is, can I use the structure of the network to find the source? Okay. So that'll be the first problem we talk about. Now, the second problem we're going to talk about is measuring influence in these networks. So the motivating example here is viral marketing of a new product. So let's say I'm that company that makes that chocolate bar. And there's some social network, Twitter, Facebook, something. And on that network, people are talking about my product. Now, as the company making the product, what I want to do is find a way to actually measure the influence of everybody, right? Determine how much influence each person has in this network. And perhaps the structure of this network can actually tell me how much influence they have. So now let's a quick overview of the talk. First, we're going to talk about finding a rumor source. And in particular, we're going to show you that the right centrality for this problem is something we developed called rumor centrality. And this rumor centrality is a high performance solution for this problem in the sense that it'll find your source with high accuracy. Also, it's a scalable solution. So we can compute in linear time for network. And second part of the talk, we'll talk about measuring influence in Twitter. Now for this problem, we'll show again that this rumor centrality actually is the right uh, centrality measure in the sense that it correctly quantifies the influence. And we'll demonstrate this using empirical data from Twitter. And then, with, based upon these results, we'll actually show you a thing we developed called Trumer, which is a dynamic influence tracking engine for Twitter that we made here in our room. So let's begin with finding rumor sources. So, I want to start I'm hustling, 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 hustling. Every day I'm hustling, every day I'm hustling. So now we have our strategy measure for measuring influence. And I measure influence, I mean, what we really want to do is we can do quantifying dynamic topic-based influence. Because these retweet networks, they're specific to topic, they're specific to like, time window. And so being that we're engineers, we actually went ahead and built a system that can do this. And our system is called Truber. Now, the way Truber works is we have a Twitter crawler that's crawling Twitter's public API. So we're getting 1% of the tweet volume. So it's not all of Twitter, it's a small fraction of it. But still a decent amount. We have right now, I think, 2.5 million tweets in our database. And then we built this interface for the engine. And I want to thank Ammar, my colleague, who actually worked hours to get this interface working. So thank you very much for that. And the way it works is you type in a query in the Truma. You pick a start date, a stop date, and then, well, actually, instead of talking about it, if the committee permits, can I just try it? Okay. So let's try Truma. So, so I'll do the first query, so that's how it works. So um, recently the S&P kind of downgraded it was dead. So let's search for S&P. And let's put the dates from the beginning of our problem because there's not too much data in the database yet. Right. So when I click true research, what's going to happen is it's going to go to the database, get all the tweets matching S&P, build the retweet network, calculate rumor centrality, and then return to you all the users ranked by rumor centrality score with their tweets. Ready? So here we go. Done. Right? So it actually, you can do it in real time. And if you see the results we got, we got Think Progress, which is some kind of liberal think tank. We got Reuters, um, Breaking News, CNN Break. And this is their true score, 17, 28. So it's getting kind of the important tweets. Um, so now we can let the audience kind of suggest things. So anybody want to try something? Credit rating? 
We got someone like David Walton who says, not all countries with AAA credit rating have universal health care. So, <laughs> uh, we can see it in the break. Again, big progress. Someone in Ray Pride, Death Star, PR, Reuters, Breaking News, Newt Gingrich. <laughs> what about men in riots? Okay, so. This is different. Actually, the riots are happening in the whole country. They're not just in London. Let's start riots. Let's see what we get. We'll broaden the search for them. So, one so riots, we get. ITV, that's the main news channel in London. BBC News, talking about it. And we get someone in Peston, some people talking about the rights. Anything else? Lady Gaga. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Superstar, Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga, what do we get? So Lady Gaga has a score of 100. <laughs> 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 the next highest is a score of 8.7. So this is some fans of Lady Gaga. Clearly she's. <laughs> Dominating that topic. She's the most <laughs> Anything else? You want to try something? Erod. 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 Should I spell it with one word? Dash. Uh, I get some weird stuff. <laughs> Let's try it with the, without the dash. Erod. So we get FSI John Heyman. So these are very low true scores. Too. It means basically there's not enough tweaks in the database to like get the results. Mm -hmm. It's only a percent. But if we had more, I'm sure we'd get better results. Anybody else want to try something? It's Harry Potter. Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter. You want to change the dates? Yeah. Well, is there are dates you want to? Well, I picked the whole date because this we only have two million tweets in the, in the database. Oh. Just to get a snatch of results. So we got the HP secret to so the score of 19, mm -hmm. Snape. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, Harry, Harry Potter. Harry Potter. <laughs> Let me do one more query, kind of show you the kind of power of this thing um, before I move on. So the query is going to be Syria. So right now in Syria, there's this kind of upheaval happening. And if you search Truman for Syria, you get these Arabic tweets from things like New Syrev, Syria Bleeding, Mr. Sala 6. So, you know, if you think about this, if you have some kind of uprising in some country in the Middle East, and you just go to Truber and type in that country, you kind of figure out, you know, for those protests, who's leading them, who's organizing them, things like that. There's a lot of potential power for this Truber. So, <laughs> <laughs> <It's> you. <laughs> a power. How to Okay, so that's uh, let's wrap up quickly. So, the whole point of this thesis has been that this network centrality philosophy is kind of a good way to attack these network problems. And the philosophy is, you give me a network problem, I figure out the right centrality to use based upon the structure I want. And I use this trial to actually construct a solution. And we saw this approach being used for different kinds of problems, for like rumor source detection, measuring influence, uh, web search, et cetera. And each time we saw it, it gave you kind of a nice, high performance, scalable solution. Right? Rumor centrality with our high performance, scalable estimate of rumor sources. We've just seen Trumor. Um, one more thing I didn't talk about here, but I've worked on, is called the leader of follow algorithm. This is an algorithm of actually learning communities and networks, such as Facebook. And again, this follows the same philosophy, using network centralities to extract the relevant structure. And going forward, right, these networks are going to get bigger, they're going to get more complex, people are going to keep tweeting. And I feel that this philosophy is kind of a way to approach the problems going ahead in the future. With that, I'd like to thank everyone. So before we clap, I just want to thank a few people. Just, of course, thank the committee. Uh, thank DevRot for just being an incredibly awesome advisor for really letting me kind of do this research in my own expressive way. I want to thank my lab mates who kind of helped me with all this work along the way, especially Ammar with his incredible JavaScript abilities. <laughs> and I want to thank my family who's here today for just always being there, backing me up along the way. And in particular, I want to thank my grandparents who have raised me since day one. And uh, without them, I wouldn't be here today defending this thesis. So, Grandma and Grandpa, this is for you. <laughs>